Good evening to this uh, second edition of uh, Offside, um, the programme that looks at uh, Western Supermare Football Club and takes the lid off uh, things that are happening within the club. Uh, I'm Richard Sloan, and tonight my guests are Paul Bliss, uh, chairman of the club, uh, Craig Laird, uh, who's the manager, and our young and up-and-coming goalkeeper, Lloyd Irish. Good evening, gentlemen. Evening. Good evening. Uh, this is your opportunity to ask questions. Um, please put them on either the Western uh, Supertelevision.com, www.westernsupertelevision.com, or on the Facebook uh, uh, page uh, for Western Supermare. I'd like, first of all, to ask uh, Paul, our chairman. Um, Paul, this is a very difficult time for clubs in, uh, in the league. Uh, many of them are having financial difficulties. Um, how do we, as a club, sort of survive that? You know, we've got Truro City, who've um, had a lot of problems just recently. How do we manage, as a club, to maintain our position financially? We only pay what we, uh, what we produce each year. We set a budget in February... And we know traditionally what the club's going to generate across all its sources of income. And once we, we've established that, then that's what we make available for the football management to um, play with. And we make sure we pay all our debts when they're due. Most importantly, that due to the inland revenue. And that is the area where most clubs fall foul. OK, fine. Um, would you say that uh, our position at the moment, our financial position, would allow us to um, climb the table and maybe at some point in the future, I know mean, the fans would be interested in that, to um, gain promotion to the next level? Well, the budget's been set. That's what we've um, got available to ourselves. Um, whether we can um, go on and uh, get promotion... Um, on that budget remains to be seen. Uh, um, there's no more there at the moment, um, but we're always looking for means of producing more, and as and when we do, we make it available. The club has always made any surpluses it's produced available to improving the facilities and improving the standard of pay, uh, play. Um, the facilities now are set, so there's no more money to have to be spent on that. The stadium is fine. So anything that's generated goes towards the uh, playing budget. OK. I mean, at the moment, we are 11th in the league. Uh, we're doing extremely well. Uh, we've got a goal difference of, uh, of, of zero. Um, you've been chairman for ne many, many years. Um, how do you feel today with the success that these guys are currently having? I feel very pleased particularly for the supporters who have been in the doldrums for now a few years, probably three, maybe four years, and uh, um, the supporters have uh, turned up week in, week out, the regular ones that we have, and uh, now they've got something to shout about. So I'm very pleased for them, and of course it takes pressure off the board as well. Um, you know, it's much better to be involved in a side that's playing good football and... Uh, winning games than it is uh, s fighting off relegation. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah, it's good. So these guys have been uh, extremely good this season and, of course, last season. Uh, I'd now like to ask uh, Lloyd Irish, our goalkeeper, a few questions. And I guess the first one, Lloyd, uh, surrounds the fact that uh, Craig brought you in uh, at the beginning of last season and you played, I think, nearly every game uh, last season, didn't you? Yeah. And you've been ever-present uh, this year. How, how does it feel to... Um, come into a team like this you know what does it do to you does it boost the morale and so on yeah definitely moving up obviously gives you a bit more confidence because um, Craig obviously had confidence in, in us all of us to bring us in but um, it was made a lot easier for myself coming stepping up a level when a lot of the other players did as well so we sort of helped each other and uh, adapted to it together so, but it was a took it was a lot it was my first game I was a bit nervous going into, but after that it was fine. Best league game. OK. Uh, we have a couple of questions uh, for, for Lloyd, and the first one uh, comes from uh, Ian Russ. Uh, good evening, Russ. Ian, um, is Irish the best keeper in the league? Um, and he says, uh, best I've seen. Uh, well, that Oxford United uh, guy was, uh, was good, though. But he's on loan from a proper team, I think. Um, how do you feel about that, Lloyd? You know, best keeper in the league. Would you agree with that? Well, it's, uh, it's one person's view, but 
there's a lot of good keepers in our league, but we just do what we can, all of us. Okay. Uh, Ryan Archer, good evening Ryan, uh, asks, um, are you the only goalkeeper that we've got or do we have understudies um, within the club? We've got another keeper who's been with us about a month now um, from the youth team. He's a really good goalkeeper and uh, he's started coming to, well, he comes training every, every time and comes to some of the home games as well. So it's nice to have someone to warm me up as well. So it's pretty, uh, and a bit of competition as well, some competition, so it's good. Okay, good, fine. Uh, the, the questions are now coming in uh, thick and fast, so please keep on uh, sending them in. We have another one now from Ryan Archer, who is actually responding to one of the other comments. And uh, I will read that out because it's very interesting to, to all of us to, to hear that. Uh, Ryan Archer says, yeah, I know, but what I mean is, uh, this is uh, Lloyd, does he ever feel like he's the only person in the squad whose position is not under threat? Uh, if he underperforms... I know Western are a small club, but every other position has some cover. What if he got injured? I suppose, really, that's a question for the manager, Craig, and I'll now turn to Craig and ask him that, that question. You know, what happens if, if Lloydie gets injured? Well, I don't really want to, um, <laughs> to put the mockers on it, said a touch wood that he doesn't get injured tomorrow, like, but um, we've got a good understudy in, in, in Dan, but if we felt we need to go and get a keeper to replace Lloyd either through lack of form of an injury then that's something we would we would do we've always got one or two keepers lined up if we need to bring one in at short notice but hopefully we don't need to do that because Lloyd's exceptional exceptional goalkeeper for this level and uh, I've known Lloyd since he was a little lad and watched him progress through the the system um, going on to Yeovil and then playing for Taunton I always felt if I was going to go to a higher level he'd be one of my first signings and uh, and promised him that and he, and he was and he hasn't let me down so more than happy to have him as the first team keeper and hopefully he'll be there for the next five or six years and progress further hopefully in the game. Okay fine thank you very much. Um, just turning to Lloyd again uh, those of you that went to the Dartford game uh, will remember that um, it was quite a difficult game there were over uh, 1200 spectators there and, and you Lloyd were if you like, at the butt of people's um, jokes and comments and so on, throughout the whole game. Yeah. Um, how did you cope with that? I'm sure the viewers would like to know uh, you know your reactions to that. It's the butt of my jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just try and blank it out, really. If, if you uh, let it get to you, then it just puts more pressure on yourself. But um, it's also not, it's not a bad thing when they're on your back as opposed to being behind their team cheering them on. So normally we see it as a as a positive, really, and just try and blank it out yep. and wind them up even more. It's a massive learning curve for, I think, all our players to play in front of a big crowd, you know, from where they've come. You know, a lot of them, you know, played in the lower divisions and um, they've played in front of big crowds, but when it's so vociferous as it is against Dover and Dartford and, and, and Chelmsford as well, mm. um, it's a massive learning curve for them and a great experience and something they'll take on hopefully in the next couple of years and it won't affect their performances. I think the first time it's quite a shock, but I think as we progress over the next couple of seasons, it's something they'll be able to cope with a lot easier. OK, fine. Uh, finally, for now, for now um, Lloyd, um, do you have any superstitions that, that our viewers would um, like to hear about? You know, before you go out on the game, uh, what do you have for breakfast in the morning, that sort of stuff? I don't, to be honest. I just wake up and just get ready. I thought it was Blue Square. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> or Paddy Power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, to be honest. I have routine. I suppose I sit in the same seat every time because that's where my kit's put. I, I always like to go in after warm up a little bit early. But nothing, not like Nat. Nat sits in the shower before the game. <laughs> yes, I think we heard about that last time. Um, there was also another story about Nat, I believe, uh, when we went down to Dover, wasn't there? And yeah. Losing keys and so on? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> but it ended up, uh, Pricey ended up having that on, so... Yeah. <laughs> But that's one of the other butts of the jokes. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to get, that's why. Yeah. OK. Craig, uh, perhaps I could turn to you now. The burning questions, I think, coming through are regarding signings and so on over the last um, 24 hours or so. Um, could you tell the viewers um, what it was about Mark McGregor that uh, persuaded you to, to sign him and um, uh, what asset you think he'll be to, to the team? Um, I've watched Mark play over the last couple of seasons when I, before I became manager of... Uh, Western Supermare. Uh, I've always rated him as a striker. He's, he's a good player, he's a great attitude. He's, he's going to be good to have around the change rooms for his experience with the younger players in the side. 
Um, hopefully he scores a couple of goals. He's got a good goal scoring record for the club. So all those things coming together, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll give a little bit more to the team. Um, I think we're lacking a, a, an experienced player to take the pressure off all the younger players and hopefully Mark will be that player to do that. So um, we're more than happy to sign him. But I've, I've seen him play for a long time. I said over the last couple of seasons, he's a good player like him and a good chap as well. Like him. So he'd be good to have around. OK. Uh, we now have another question, um, and this time it uh, does pertain to uh, Mark McGregor, and it comes from um, Chris Gordon. Good evening, Chris, uh, for Cor Craig. Uh, is Mark McGregor going to be just a player or a player coach, as he, ha- he was a coach at Worcester whilst still being a player? Well, I think it would be daft himself not to use any experience that Mark's got to be able to assist the team and assist the players that we have around us. So any knowledge that Mark's has and anything that I can give to him to improve him as a coach, and yeah. But foremost, he'll be a player. Um, and I'm sure as the season goes on, he'll get more involved with the, the, the coaching side and maybe pass on some of the experiences to the younger players. But yeah, definitely. If that's, that's something he wants to do, then okay. we're more than happy to go down that road with him. Okay. And maybe one day become a, a manager of Western Superman Football Club. Okay. Not too soon, but... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd now like to ask Paul for um, his view... Uh, from as a chairman not of the too club. simple <laughs> I may not ask the question uh, to ask Paul a question um, as Craig has brought Mark in from a board perspective how do you feel that that, uh, that signing uh, uh, will do good for the club I think um, <clears throat> Mark's going to be a great asset to the club I've known him for many years his attitude is good He's good in the changing room, he's good to have around, he's very knowledgeable, and uh, I see him as a, a plus. Yeah. Okay, fine, thank you very much. Um, we now have another uh, question, and this time it's from Ryan Archer, uh, for, again for Craig. Uh, is Mark going straight into uh, the uh, starting 11 of Saturday? And even more importantly, do you think him and Cabba can be a decent partnership? Um, yes, I think they can be. I think uh, Mark will be in the squad for, for tomorrow. We'll make a decision on the start at 11 tomorrow. Um, I don't want to steal Paul's thunder, but Paul currently really said he doesn't know where they've got to keep up with Cabba, uh, which, will be, <laughs> which will be a difficult thing to do, I think, for many players. Um, I, I think Mark will integrate into the system, and whoever he plays with, he'll, he'll, he'll make a great understanding with any of those players and, and hopefully push Western forward into the playoffs, and that's what we're looking for. So it's my job as a manager to always try and bring in players that will always improve the squad, and that's my, my job. That's the remit I've been given by Paul within the, the, the constraints of the budget, um, and we'll always try and do that. And so we're always looking for players to try and improve the squad, but they have to be as good if not better than what we've got. And we need that they're going to feel that they're going to integrate with the team and with the squad that we've already got, the work ethic, um, the team spirit. And if they can do that, then they're the right player for the side. But I get lots of approaches from lots of players every week that want to join us because of how successful we have been over the last year or so. But they've got to be the right player at the right time for the club. We can't just sign anyone. But I think Mike will do that. I think he'll fit that bill. Yeah, I think the, the viewers would like to know um, about the, the approaches that you do get because it's, ev- it's obvious um, from people within the club and behind the scenes that a number of players actually come to the ground uh, and ask for trials and so on during the season, don't they? They do, yeah. yeah. Well, they said you get a stream of, uh, of emails, don't you, from the, the conference and from Football League saying that these players have been released. Uh, we get players that send their CVs in and also people just turning up at the door. And they said it's... it's um, important that we give these players an opportunity because there might be a little gem there but also it, it, we have to be realistic and say we can only carry a squad of 20 and I said they have to be better than the players we've already got and, and that's always the, the measure like if they're better than what we've got then we'll give them an opportunity at Western okay. but they have to add other things you know they have to be involved in team spirit have to buy into what we're doing at Western Supermare and I think what we're doing at the moment is uh, has been successful so far so we'll carry on doing that um, thank you very much, Craig. Um, supporters, we are still looking for more questions from you. Um, if you have a burning question that you want to ask of any of the panel tonight, please do um, come in on Facebook or on uh, westernsupertelevision.com and I'll do my best to post a question and no doubt we'll get um, good answers uh, from the panel. Craig, can I ask you another question? Um, we went down to um, Somerset Premier Cup uh, last week and had a really good win 
against Bristol Manor Farm. How do you see that as, uh, as part of the, the season? Does it do morale good? Um, is it a waste of time? Because you put out a full squad that night. Um, I think we owe it to the to supporters and I think we owe it to the club and to the competition itself to, to treat it with respect. I think that mm. we can't choose what trophy we win. We have to try and win every trophy that's put in front of us, whether it's the FA Cup, the, the league, the the. The, the FA Trophy or the, the Somerset Premier Cup. We'll always do our best in every competition that we can. Now, if we were on a, a big FA Cup run, then we may have put the priority somewhere else, you know, so the Premier Cup might have gone a little bit down the pecking order, but I, I feel that we should treat every competition as we, and, and we want to try and win it. And mm. to do that, we have to, to pick the best side, you know, and, 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 and put the best side out to whoever we're playing. Like, eh? And I think that's been honourable to the, the Somerset Premier Cup as well. So no, we'll always do our best in any competition we're involved in. Because it is, it, Paul, it is expensive, isn't it, to to run a team in competitions like the Somerset Premier Cup when, um, as, as uh, Craig says, some clubs have seen it devalued by either not um, participating or putting out weakened sides. But uh, we've always, um, certainly under Craig's leadership, put out a, a top uh, quality side. How do you see that from, from the board's perspective? It's something that you'd like to see us progress in? I think that's what we should have always done. We haven't always done it, and I've never interfered with the management, football management. And if they've chosen to pick a weakened side, really as a board, we've not sort of uh, um, instructed them not to do that. But I think uh, what Craig has said is right. We should field our best side, and certainly I know the supporters, a lot of supporters that would have liked to have seen us do that in the past, which we have not always done. I'll be the first to acknowledge that, and I think it's absolutely um, correct to go and field the best side we've got and go and try and win the competition. Yeah. And it was lovely at the end of last season to do that and bring it home. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. all these things, they breed confidence, don't they? And they, they bring a bit of something <coughs> to the club. Your new supporters have won a trophy. Um, and I, I think it, it does. It breeds confidence in the team as well. Like if you're winning, that's a great habit to be in, isn't it? You know, and if you can win in a cup, then it's even better. So, um, yeah, we, we think they're all important. I mean, we had a, a good le level of support there uh, on on previous Tuesday night at Bristol Manor Farm. Um, as things stand at the moment, the Somerset FA have not yet um, drawn the teams for the quarter final. Uh, there was an appeal last night by um, Odd Down um, against a particular situation which the Somerset FA are still um, working on and so therefore the, uh, the quarter-final draw has been delayed but as soon as uh, we know what it is uh, we will let you know. There was some uh, comment on Facebook that we've been drawn against uh, Froome Town. Uh, that clearly wasn't the case, uh, as I say, the, the um, draw hasn't been made yet. Okay, uh, we've had some difficult games. Uh, over the last few weeks, Dover, um, where we're unlucky not to, to get a point there uh, for various reasons. Uh, Dartford, uh, where although we, uh, we did very well there, we had a player sent off. Craig, would you like to tell our viewers um, how we managed the situation following his sending off? What did we do to try and ascertain what actually happened? Well, at this level, most games are videoed. Um, I went and seen the referee after the game and, and asked him his point of view of the sending off because he said he's he seen it differently to the, the majority of us. And I think quite a few of their supporters felt that Jamie was unfairly treated as well. We watched the, I've asked him to watch the video and reassess his, uh, his decision. He said he would do that. Um, I don't think we've heard yet back from, the, from himself or the FA about the sending off yet. Um, but we've watched the, the, um, the video itself. Uh, and even though we feel that the, the, the tackle was, um, what should I say, competitive, we don't think it was worthy of a, a, well, certainly not worthy of a red card and probably a yellow card at most. So we've got the opportunity to appeal. Um, we haven't done that because we've taken advice from other clubs and they feel that you're probably wasting your time using the video as appealing to the FA. So um, Jamie will take his punishment as it comes. But hopefully the referee's watched it and he may have changed his, his mind on the... The decision and maybe just rescind it to a yellow so um okay that's where we're at the moment anyway okay thank you very much uh we now have two um statements really i guess from from uh, uh our supporters uh, our viewers tonight one is from avin or avin good evening avin i hear craig still joins in training and is top scorer this is true <laughs> 
<laughs> we always finish a game when I've scored. Yeah, of course we do. <laughs> yeah. um, I do try and join in a little bit, um, uh, just for my own personal enjoyment and, and try and keep myself a little bit fitter. But um, they're, they're far too good for me, the players. And um, I'm sure it's only sent through sympathy that they let me score now and again. And then you usually take the mickey and pull my shorts down or something. So, uh, yeah. And I'm not sure whether I should read out the uh, statement from Matt P. Good evening, Matt. Um, but I guess, even though it's only halfway through the season, I will. And Matt says, uh, tell Craig he's the best manager we've ever had. <laughs> Who's Matt P? <laughs> is that Matt Pegler, is it? Yeah, cool. OK. Uh, now, Thank you. Now, a further, further question. <laughs> um, this is to, to, to the whole of the panel. Um, if I can find it. Oh, yeah. It's from Sam Frost. Good evening, Sam. And Sam says, as we are pretty much halfway through the season, how do you feel it has gone? And are we on target for the playoffs? Lloyd, would you like to um, kick in off that one? Yeah, um, I think we've had a good start, really. We've had a tough run of games now where we've just come out of five of the top top half where we've just... And we, um, we didn't win in five, but we've, we've, uh, we're unbeaten in three now. And... Um, yeah, we played away at Woke in Dover, Dartford. So I think we've got a lot of the tough away games out of the way. So I think we're still on course for the playoffs, definitely. OK. Craig, did you share that for you? Um, yeah, we're probably... I think we've accumulated more points than we did the season before I joined. So we're, we're ahead of schedule there. Um, we have come through quite a tough period with the FA Cup and the, the travelling to Dover and Dartford, uh, playing Sutton and, and Eastbourne, who were a conference team last year. Um, physically it takes out the players and emotionally as well like they're, they're tough matches and we're probably I would say three or four points away from where we really wanted to be where I think we should have been at this, this time and, and maybe we should have been in the next round of the FA Cup so that's emotionally disappointing to the players they've had to get over it um, I think they've responded really really well and it shows the character of the player that we have at the club to, to get over such a big disappointment because it was for everybody like I think but they've, they've got on with it now we've got a, a, a win in the Premier Cup which helps you know so um, and then we've got a decent win against Staines and we've got a great draw at uh, Dartford. And uh, I think we should have got something at Dover. I know the, uh, the Dover supporters and the, Chel the Chelmsford, the, uh, the Dartford supporters were disappointed in our performances at, at their clubs. But as I said, we don't owe them anything. We, we go there to look after Western Supermare. We go there because I'm only interested in Western and the success at Western Supermare. I think we play a great style of football when we need to. And I think we ground out two great results. And unfortunately for the for the last minute at, at Dover, we'd have had another great point, you know, and, um, and if it upsets them, then it upsets them. It's not really my concern. OK. Paul, you've been chairman now for, what, is it 26 years, is it? 25. 25. Yeah, um, I've built enough. No. Well, <laughs> how would you answer that question? You know, we're halfway <laughs> through the season. Um, yeah. Are we near the playoffs? How's it going? You know, from your experience, vast experience, really, how would you feel the season's going so far? It's going very well. We're still in touch. Just get a little run and you're amongst them again. And uh, the boys have demonstrated they can beat the best out there. I mean, obviously, Woking's a first-class team. The guy that's running them's had a lot of experience. He's seen it. He's been there and done it before. And uh, But uh, yeah, it would be nice to get in the playoffs. Yeah, okay. yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of Western teams over the years. You know, I've Quite a few of my friends played for Western during the Western League and when they got into the was it the Dr. Martins League then. So I know the, the success they've had and some of the good managers that they've had here and they've had lots of success. They've gone through a bit of a, a lean period, but you know, the managers who are here at the time do their best, you know, and now it's my opportunity and hopefully I can bring success to to Western mm. Superman for the supporters because I try to manage and like I'm a supporter like and what, mm. would, what would I like I want to see my team working hard and want to see them honest yeah. and if we can play a nice style that people want to watch as well even better but the most important thing is that every time they go out and play for Western and they pull on the shirt and they wear the badge of Western Superman they play as if they were supporters and they give everything for the club for that 90 minutes and I think most mm. people can forgive them if they lose yeah that's right yeah no, they certainly do that yeah yeah yeah, okay, uh, we have another question from uh, Ryan Archer. Uh, good evening again, Ryan. This is your question to, to Paul. Um, how involved do you like to be in the football side of the club? Wow. Well, he picks a team every week. Yeah. <laughs> how much more does he want to be involved? <laughs> no, I'm quite happy <laughs> doing what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's too big a job all the time. <laughs> 
Okay, we have a know. we have a, we have a question now from uh, Ollie. Sorry, Ollie. Uh, oh, Ollie Bliss. Evening, Ollie. Ollie, I wonder who that is. Then, uh, what <laughs> position does Craig think we will finish in? What the the I, club itself, or, well, or myself team. playing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, the team. Right. Um, I would like to think we'll get near the playoffs. I think if we could be touching on the playoffs with four or five games to go, I think that would have been a great season. I, I don't think we'll quite win it this year with the way Woken are, are flying and a couple of the other sides. But um, I think if we can get near the playoffs and at least have a chance of getting in the playoffs with two or three games to go, I think that would have been a, a great season for us and exciting. Yeah. And that will be an improvement again on last year. Yeah. And then, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll be in a job next year. And maybe have a chance of, of getting to the playoffs, if not winning it next year. Like, but uh, it's always steady progression. I think since last year, yeah. I think we've progressed again. Got more points from last year. We carried on in the cup. We had a better cup run in the FA Cup. Maybe not quite as far as we wanted to. We've still got the trophy to play in. So, well, we're further ahead um, this season than we yeah. were at this time last year. Yeah. And so, yeah. as you say, it's progression the whole way. And I think. I think yeah. supporters, from some of the questions that are being asked, are so involved in um, wanting the club to do well. Yeah. It's so great to see all these questions. Of course it is. Mm. Uh, we do have a comment from um, Craig Led Jr. I'm not sure, Craig, whether I should uh, read this. Ring me. Whether, yeah, ring, <laughs> ring him. And it is for, it is for his dad. And um, <laughs> the question is, to the old man. Hang on. <laughs> there you go. Uh, will my room still be available for when I come home at Christmas? <laughs> Are you sure you really wanted to have said that tonight? Well, there you go. OK. I have to get the lodges out first. <laughs> uh, now, now to a more perhaps serious question. Um, this one is from, from uh, Robbie Bangham. Um, I think he's uh, actually... He's our commentator on the uh, highlights of the games and he is actually standing almost behind me in the room here. But Robbie's question is uh, for Craig. How do you pick the players up after a disappointing result? You know, e.g. the FA Cup... Uh, cup game or do the players in the squad do that themselves um, a little bit of both I think I've always said to the players that one of the worst traits I hate is self pity and feeling for sorry for yourself because I think that during the 90 minutes you've got the opportunity to, to win the game and if you don't put in the effort you don't take your opportunities you don't defend properly then you, you, you don't deserve to win the game and you can't blame anyone else but yourself I know during a game you can get poor refereeing decisions but he's not the one actually sticking the ball in the back of the you know well, not generally. We haven't seen that this year with the referee heading yeah. the ball in. But um, so, in the end, it's down to them. They've got the opportunity, and if they don't live up to those expectations and don't take their chances, it's their fault, and they should then get on with the, the, the next game and worry about that. So, I said self pity doesn't do anything for me. No, absolutely not. No. Well, time is moving on. Uh, we're nearly at the the end of the program this evening. I just want to uh, finish with uh, two or three questions about. Games that have um, been played this week, um, earlier in the week, and um, will be played on Saturday, uh, tomorrow with Maidenhead United, and looking ahead to Salisbury City uh, trophy game. How do you see, Craig, those games going? I mean, it's quite a build-up now, isn't it? We, we, it's, tomorrow's a massive game for us. Uh, we need to get three points to push us right back to where I think we should be in the points tally we should have at this time of the season for the, the statue of the club. Um, so tomorrow we'll be endeavouring to get three points and we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to get that. Um, the players train well on Thursday night. Um, we've got a couple of little niggling injuries, but I think we'll, we'll be OK. Uh, Matt Villa should be fit for Saturday. Um, hopefully Maidenhead will have their eye, half an eye on the FA Cup replay they have because uh, they've got a big tie if they get through that. So I think hopefully with those two things we should be able to pick up three points and then have a little bit of a break and go into the game against Salisbury. Um, which will be another tough match, and we'll be missing Martin Slocum and Jamie Price through suspension. So, another little headache for us. But as I said that's the reason why we carry a squad like we do. We've got good players who are in, who are in the, the the background who will come in, and I'm sure we'll we'll do a great job for the team. Yeah, that's uh, that is a question uh, from Sam Frost. Hello, Sam. Um, who actually asked, are there any plans for signing some cover at centre half as Villas tends to pick up the odd injury? And we only have the three with first team experience. Yeah, it's, we've always got our eye on a couple of players, but it's really difficult to to, to carry cover for every position. So we, you know, we've 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 got a small squad. We we haven't got a massive budget, you know, but it's it's big enough to what we're trying to do. Um, we we'll take care of it as it as it comes. We will take care of it and and just trust in that we've always got other irons in the fire somewhere else if we need to pull in someone desperately quick to cover a position, but. 
I'm more than happy with the squad we got. I don't like lots of changes. I don't like to have lots of players sitting out. You know, it's hard to keep good players happy as well if they're not playing. Um, and I just think we need to work with the players that we've got. We said we would do that. I think that's mm. something I said when I first took over the job, that you wouldn't see lots of different signings coming in every week, that we would always try and make a signing now and again just to complement what we're doing. But I think we've got the squad that we want. We just need to trust them and work hard with them. Okay. Well, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the programme. I'd like to thank our panel of uh, Paul Bliss, Chairman, uh, Craig Laird, Manager, and Lloyd Irish, our goalkeeper. Uh, if you've enjoyed tonight's programme, um, please let us know. Uh, please let uh, westernsupertelevision.com uh, know that you've enjoyed it, or through our Facebook. Uh, we will do another uh, offside in uh, next month. And we look forward to seeing you all at the Woodspring Stadium tomorrow afternoon, Maidenhead United, kick-off 3pm. Thank you for watching. <laughs>